Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. There are many extreme and dangerous jobs in the U.S. military. But few can compare with being a Navy diver. These men and women must not only face the standard threats that come with military service, but also spend their lives operating in extreme underwater environments. The first Navy dives date all the way back to the early 1800s. During the Civil War, however, the U.S. began using divers for salvage, repairing ships, and clearing underwater obstacles. This demonstrated just how helpful having a fleet of naval divers could be. And they've been employed by militaries around the world ever since. Today, these men and women must undergo a rigorous training and qualification process, including physically demanding courses in diving physics, physiology, salvage techniques, underwater construction, and hazardous material handling. Navy divers must be able to perform their duties in a wide range of different situations and environments. If a ship encounters an underwater obstruction or suffers damage that must be inspected immediately, it's not as if the divers can simply wait for optimal conditions. One of the most dangerous places to dive is the Arctic. Indeed, divers must be specially qualified to operate in this frigid water and have extensive knowledge regarding cold diving's effects on the body and how to manage and prevent hypothermia. To reduce the danger, Navy divers wear specialized dry suits or heavily insulated wetsuits designed to help maintain body heat and prevent the cold from penetrating too deeply. Dip your tanks, dip your brakes, dip your rag. Divers must also carry specific equipment, including ice picks or ice axes which help them escape if they become trapped under ice. One little-known duty often assigned to naval divers is inspecting a ship's degaussing system. Degaussing refers to a process in which various devices and techniques are used to reduce or eliminate the magnetic signature of a vessel. Unfortunately, due to different magnetic materials used in onboard equipment and sometimes in the hull itself, ships will give off a magnetic signature that can be detected by magnetic mines or sensors, posing a significant risk to the ship's safety. The degaussing process involves applying controlled electrical currents to the ship's hull and other magnetic components to neutralize their magnetic fields. In many cases, this is accomplished by passing electrical cables along the length of the ship and through degaussing stations strategically placed around the vessel. Since a malfunctioning system could put a naval ship in a dangerous situation and must be dealt with immediately. Among the most elite divers working in the U.S. Navy are those assigned to the UCT, which stands for Underwater Construction Teams. These specialized divers are responsible for performing underwater construction and maintenance operations of all kinds, including the building and repairing of naval infrastructure.
These men and women are trained in skills such as underwater welding and cutting techniques, which allows them to perform repairs and construction tasks on submerged structures. They are also highly skilled in salvaging vessels, equipment, or materials from underwater environments. In many cases, UCTs or CBs must either utilize or dispose of underwater explosive devices, which is one of the most dangerous tasks in the entire military. UCT divers must undergo rigorous training to develop the skills necessary to perform their jobs. This includes extensive training and diving techniques, underwater construction methods, welding, specialized tools, equipment use, and most importantly, safety procedures. This all starts with a dive school. Here, they learn the fundamentals of diving, including dive physics, physiology, and equipment operation. They also receive extensive training in various dive techniques, such as open circuit scuba diving, closed circuit rebreathers, and surface supplied diving. As dangerous as underwater hazards can be, the mere act of diving and its effects on the body are a primary hazard for CBs. Inspections are also a big part of the average CB's duties. When it comes to damage to anchors, mooring systems and ship holes, the only way to get a proper look at the problem is to send divers down to inspect it. Whether the inspection is routine or part of an emergency situation, it's important to understand how crucial such operations are to the safety of the ship. Despite operating primarily under the water, the men and women of the UCT are no strangers to emergency situations that take place elsewhere. In cases such as overwater plane crashes and boat collisions, nearby UCTs will join the Coast Guard and other local authorities in rendering rapid assistance to those in need, whether they're civilians or other military members. The underwater world is filled with sunken vessels and equipment that, due to various factors, may need to be salvaged at one time or another. Perhaps one of the best examples is the British tanker SS Coimbra. At 6,768 tons and approximately 455 feet long, the ship was huge and served a number of important functions throughout the 20s and 30s. Unfortunately, it was attacked by a German U-boat off the coast of Long Island on January 15, 1942, and it went down carrying more than 6 million gallons of oil. Decades later, it was determined that the ship might be leaking oil, and a salvage team from the Navy was sent to investigate and, if possible, recover the oil. The Coimbra was resting at a depth of around 180 feet, so deep sea divers first had to go down and inspect the wreckage. 
Once the U.S. Coast Guard and the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation determined that the oil trapped in the vessel was indeed a risk, divers were sent down again to install valves and attach pumping systems to the wreck. This would allow surface ships to remove the oil safely and minimize future risks to the ecosystem. As with many modern salvage operations, ROVs or remotely operated vehicles played a significant role. Underwater ROVs are specifically designed to perform tasks in deep water environments where it may be difficult or dangerous for humans to operate directly. ROVs are typically equipped with cameras, lights, manipulator arms, and other specialized tools, which allow them to play a crucial role in locating and retrieving underwater objects. ROVs can carry various sensors to monitor environmental parameters such as water temperature, salinity, dissolved oxygen levels, or pollutants. These ROVs on site at the Coimbra wreck helped provide recovery crews with information about whether or not the valves and pumps were working properly. The United States military often collaborates with other countries around the world for specialized training exercises involving divers and their shipboard counterparts. Many of these are search, escape, and rescue operations, also known as SMERs. These training drills aim to enhance each team's skill and preparedness in locating, rescuing, and recovering personnel and equipment in various challenging underwater environments. During SMER exercises, divers undergo comprehensive training on different search methods, including line searches, grid searches, and visual sweeps. They will also train on assisting individuals trapped or entangled underwater, or needing to be rescued from a sunken or damaged vessel. In this Arctic exercise, divers are tasked with recovering a dummy torpedo that had been used during a different training scenario. Torpedoes like this can measure as much as 20 feet long and weigh several thousand pounds, so retrieving them from underneath Arctic ice is no simple operation. In this case, the divers must locate or create a hole in the ice sheet above them and then use tow ropes to move the massive torpedo underneath it. Once the torpedo is in place, the divers will call their ship for assistance. Depending on the location, the vessel will either use a crane or deploy a helicopter to retrieve the torpedo from under the ice sheet. Once it's back above water, teams will defuel the torpedo and inspect it for damage before reusing it. Though it may seem routine, operations like this would be nearly impossible without the assistance of naval divers. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.